Welcome to our shop. My name is Dan. This is my daughter Rachel. In this video we are going to do a tune-up on our Farm All Cub tractor. Now people will to choose to do a tune-up for one of two reasons. The first is that their tractor will no longer start on its own and they don't have spark. The second reason is maintenance. When you do the oil change, throw in a set of points. No matter what your reason is, if you want to do a tune-up on your cub, this is the video for you. We are going to put new points, condenser, rotor, a coil on top, spark plugs, and spark plug wires installed in time. So go ahead and follow along with us. And we're going to cover some troubleshooting to help you determine if your tractor does not run, what's the problem. We want to go over some things to pinpoint your problem. Why does my tractor not have sparks? So we're going to start with the ignition switch up here. I'm going to take a tester like this with the screwdriver with a handle. I'm going to put it on over here. It's a little stretch for me. Go ahead and turn it on. You can see the lights on. The switch is working. So we know we got power to the coil. Now when the coil, we're going to go to the distributor. Are the points working? Simple way to figure that out is Rachel's going to roll it over, make sure it's not in gear, we're going to roll it over and that light goes on and off as the points close, they go to ground, so the light will go out. So we're going to go ahead and roll it over, okay, good. Now you can see the light went on and off, on and off, on and off, so we know the points are working. Now you don't have to worry about that, let's try find the next problem, why is it not running? So we moved on, could be the rotor inside the cap pop the cap open, look at the rotor, make sure the end of the electrode isn't broke or something like that. And then we get up to the spark plugs and you want to determine, do I have spark at the end of my spark plug? If you don't have a tester like this, we like these little testers, they're cheap, they're really nice testers. I got a window so we can see the spark inside. Just simply put a spark plug on the wire, lay your spark plug on the head so that it grounds out and then you can look at the spark, healthy blue spark at the end of the spark plug. We're going to see how healthy it is right here. Rachel's going to roll it over. And you can see in the window there, that baby's got a nice blue spark. So the spark now has traveled all the way through the system real quickly, determine where we've lost spark. Now, possibly the spark plugs will be fouled out, and that's where we would head next to put a set of spark plugs in. So we just want to do a quick little bit of troubleshooting to try to determine, before you start throwing parts at it, where it is that you've lost spark. Before you start taking apart your electrical system, you need to remove the ground battery cable off of your battery. That's highly important. The reason is because the starter button's hot and you're working right in here, it'd be so easy to slip your screwdriver on there and arc. Once you have your battery cable removed, you can take the cap off of your distributor. There's just two metal straps that hold it on and a screwdriver like this will help you pull that off. Once you have it free, the cap, with the wires on it, we'll just pull right out of the way and you can set that aside so that you can see um, everything that goes on inside the distributor. The first item that you're gonna see is this piece, it's called the rotor. These are often burned up. You can pry it off a little bit if you need to with a screwdriver, sometimes they'll be stuck on there. But this end will sometimes be burned or this little tab right here will either be broken off or even a hole burned through it. So inspect your rotor and um, if you don't have spark that could be the reason why. Underneath the rotor you have what's called a dust cover and that does have a seal behind it so sometimes those will be a little snug due to that seal but you can just pull that off. There's nothing that really holds it on. Inside you see the points on this side and the condenser on this side. The points are held in place by both a bolt, or I should say a nut on this side, and then a screw up there on the top. So you can use a very small wrench, like this one. This is an 11 32nd size, and you pull, get on that nut, and just loosen it up. Don't take it off all the way, but you want to loosen it up just a little bit so that you can pull that tab off. And then for the screw, you just use a regular screwdriver to pull that screw out all the way. So I'm gonna pull this out. Bear with me here if you can't quite see. I'll get my hands out of the way in just a minute. So with that out, the points are two pieces. So you're gonna get this little um, tab here first. Let me pull that out of the way. Notice that there is a tiny little lock washer behind there. So let me set that aside. And now your points, your second part of your points, I should say, are here. You can use a pair of needle nose pliers just grab right onto that tab and pull them straight up and out. And that will be the removal of your points. The next piece to remove is the condenser. See that wire wraps around there and that wire was held on the same 
tab as the uh, points were. So you can just lift that off. And then there's a little strap that goes around the condenser. And again, you're just gonna use your screwdriver to pull that out. Mine has a regular screwdriver here and it had Phillips on the points. Isn't that interesting? Well, I need a stubby screwdriver to get inside there. Here we go. So I'm just gonna pull this screw all the way out and that'll loosen up the strap and the condenser will pull out. And that is as deep as we're gonna go into the distributor in this video. When it's time to tune up your own Farmall Cub, you'll need to purchase some parts. The parts on the table in front of me are available on my website. Most commonly, people purchase this ignition tune-up kit, which contains the condenser, rotor, and two-piece points set. Also add spark plugs to get your uh, ignition system all tuned up. Some people also choose to add what's called a dust cover and a cap. These are optional as they can be reused, but they do wear out as we talk about. So if you need to replace yours, you can. New spark plug wires are available and coils are available in both six volt or 12 volt in the bullet or the generic style. Lastly, I did write a book. This is my book, Farmall Cub Encyclopedia that Ken Updike and I have written. If you really like Farmall Cub tractors, if you just like knowing history of antique tractors, this would be a good book to add to your library. Um, in the beginning, we talk about all sorts of cub history. There's an implement guide, um, paint, inf paint or decal information. And then in the back, there's a detailed repair guide, which walks you through some really common maintenance steps on your tractor. And there's a beautiful picture for every step of the way to make it really easy to follow. The distributor is one of the topics that we cover, as well as the carburetor, adjusting your brakes, uh, the magneto is covered if you happen to have a magneto, your charging system, things like that. So this is available on our site as well. And on our site, it is listed at a small discount, so you can save a little bit of money on that if you wanna purchase it. Our website is farmtractorrepair.com. Your purchase on my site helps to fund future tractor tutorials, and we really appreciate your business. I have just a touch of grease that I'm putting onto the shaft and you will want to do the same. Then you can put your new points in. So I like to get it started onto the groove and then work on this tab and try to get that where it should be. Notice inside here that there is a washer behind that nut and I like to get this in between the washer and the nut. So let me grab onto that prong with some pliers and slide it into place. Just, oops, I got my washer on the wrong side. You got the idea there. I'm gonna take that back off and make sure that the washer is closer to this bake light. And that is how you install the points there. I'll come back and replace that later so you guys don't have to watch me do that. You got the concept. Next, you have the condenser here. So this wire wraps around and the wire is gonna go onto the tab there. And then I like to use a magnet like this to get that screw started. Sometimes when you get your new condenser, this strap will be on there and you might have to kind of crimp the strap together. Sometimes it'll be a little bit pulled apart and you'll just have to crimp that till it's flat and then you're ready to install it right into your distributor. So I'm gonna work on the condenser strap first, get that screw in the right spot. With the condenser screw tightened up, our next step is to get that wire into place where it should be. So you can just grab onto it here with a pair of pliers and pull it up and into place. See how it just slides right on there, just like that. And then with everything lined up where it should be, then you can use your little wrench again and you're gonna tighten this nut up all the way, as tight as you can get it, because you want that to be really snug and secure. You get able to get just a little bit more turn on it. There we go. With that, now we're ready to put in the second portion of our points. So this is directional. There's this little tab right here and that's where the points are going to make contact. So you're gonna slide that in there and let me get it right on top of where it should be. I'm just gonna get this started so that it holds into place. Let me reach in there with a screwdriver, get a few threads turned on there. 
And then I'll show you how you can adjust the points. So just get it so that it's snug. Whoops, looks like I got it too snug. Let me back up a little bit here. Okay, now you're gonna slide it up here to where it should be. And when you buy your ignition tune-up kit, it comes with a gauge and it's a 20 thousandths gap. So let me hold the feeler gauge in there. And then I'm gonna push the second part of the points forward and tighten it up. Now I'm making this adjustment when my distributor is on high lobe. High lobe is shown right here. See where this portion of the points is touching that shaft? If you turned your distributor you would, and you were touching on this flat part, you would be on what's called low lobe, but you make that 20 thousandths adjustment right here where, where it's on high lobe. You can move that part of the distributor by using the hand crank on your tractor to make sure that you're up at high lobe. And then double check that this is in check at 20 thousandths. You want it to be snug with your gauge right there. The next piece to put on is this dust cover. The felt in the middle there, just make sure that it's stretched all the way around and it snaps down. You can hear that it's all the way down into the groove. It'd be easy to just set it on the outside, but make sure it's all the way in. Then you can set your new rotor on and that the same way, it only goes on one direction. So just slide it around until you find the spot where it's gonna set and then press it into place just like that. After that, you can put a new cap on if you please. You can inspect your old cap and if any of these tabs or the center carbon piece are broken or burned anywhere where the rotor hits, you would definitely want to replace your cap. If everything looks okay, it is a piece that you could reuse. Notice on your cap that there's a little notch right here and it matches, goes into place where the notch is on the bottom of your distributor. So where did I have my cap? Or my notch, I should say. Notch to notch is right there. And then with that, you can bring your metal straps down and they just snap right into place and set onto your distributor. One more quick troubleshooting tip here before we wrap this up with the distributor cap. If you happen to have the cap on here and you had no idea which one is number one. So I'm gonna show you a quick trip to figure out which one of these is number one. So I took the number one spark plug out, which is the piston closest to the radiator, always. I took the number one out, hooked the battery back up, made sure the tractor's in neutral, and I put my thumb over the hole. Now if you have a um, compression gauge, you can screw that in the hole and watch it peg. I'm not gonna take the time to do that. I'm just putting my thumb over the hole so I can hear when it hits compression stroke. The rotor will point to the number one as we go around. So listen. See it squeaked right there and it's pointing right over here. I'll do it again. There it goes. There it goes. So every time it's puffing my thumb out, it's right here. That's number one. And we look at the original cap that I had up there and I had marked number one on there prior to this so we could show. And that is truly number one. So number one here. This is clockwise rotation and it's one, three, four, two. So this goes to the number one cylinder. This wire will trace down to the number three cylinder. This one goes to the number four cylinder. And this one goes back up to number two cylinder. So that's how you get the firing order if you took the cap off and you didn't know where this was. Or if you took the distributor completely out of the tractor and you just put it back in, bingo, we got to figure out where number one is so that we'd have done it that way. So that's a quick little trick here before we get ready to put the cap on. We're getting ready to put new plugs in the tractor. Rachel's gonna gap them at 23 thousandths. I like to put a little bit of anti-seize on the threads. You can see this one came out and how dry it was. It makes it really tough on the tractor, just a little bit of anti-seize on the threads. Boy, the next time you go to take them out, it'll make them a lot nicer. So Rachel's gonna drop them in. We also sell new wires, so if you need new wires for your tractor, now's the time to do it. Another component to check in your system is the coil. In front of me are two things that are both coils, even though they look very different. This one is a generic coil, meaning that it fits a large variety of antique tractors. This one we call either a bullet coil or an original style coil. I have a bullet coil on the Farmall Cub behind us because I like the original look, but if you're on a budget, you would put this generic coil on instead. If you're switching from a bullet coil to a generic coil, you do need a different bracket as it's mounted differently, but it is a way that you could save money on your um, project. 
no matter what style of coil you have, it's still tested the same way. And I would encourage you to test your coil to see if it is the culprit of your problems. So you test a coil by using an ohm meter. You can see that I have my meter set right here to ohms and it's ready to test these coils for me. So I'm testing the primary here and what I like to see for a healthy coil is anywhere between 1.2 to 1.5 ohms. Mine reads 1.5. If you have the bullet coil, you test it the same way with, <laughs> that's hard to do with one hand, but you get the same reading, the 1.2 to 1.5. Now both of these are six volt coils. If you have a 12 volt coil, you're looking for a reading for a healthy coil to be around the 3.0 ohms mark. Some of these coils will also be outfitted with what's called a resistor. This is a resistor in front of me and these are available in all different sizes of ohms. If you purchase a modern coil, like one of these, these are called internally resisted coils. That means that when you put this on your tractor, you do not need to add an external resistor. Now some coils are sold and the listing will say that they're for use with an external resistor. If you happen to purchase a coil like that, then you would use an external resistor like this one. Now external resistor adds to the ohm. So if I put it on here, let's say I had it in line and then I want to test primary. Now with this resistor, I'm reading around seven ohms. You can see how much of a difference the resistor makes in your system. A lot of people get hung up on resistors. You might not even know if you have a resistor on your tractor or not. Sometimes they're hidden behind the dash or underneath the hood. So look closely. If you're having a struggle, it could be that there's a resistor from even a prior owner that's still hanging out underneath the tractor. And you would want to make sure that you, if you need it, you have it. And if you don't need it, you don't have it. I hope that that information is helpful to you so that you can figure out what coil you need to buy. Make sure that if you have a six volt system, you're getting a six volt coil. If you have a 12 volt system, you're putting a 12 volt coil on it and also help you know if you need a resistor or not. When you test your coil, if you decide that yours is bad and you wanna replace it, both of these styles of coils in both six volt and 12 volt are available on our website. Our cub starts up and runs well. I hope that yours will run as well after you are finished with the tune-up on your tractor. When you need parts, please purchase them on our website, which is farmtractorrepair.com. You can also subscribe to our YouTube channel. There's a little subscribe button in the corner and clicking that will give you a notification every time a new video comes out. Thanks for watching. We'll see you next time.